Hello, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to go for mutual fund as an investment strategy and then how do we use mutual fund in your personal financial plan. We'll go for different types of mutual funds and a very important part of investing in mutual fund or choosing mutual fund is looking at the expenses. And then we will also um, compare the risk and return on a mutual fund versus the investment objective of the mutual fund. Uh, as always, we want to take into account taxes and its impact on your investment. Uh, and finally, we're going to figure out which mutual fund is most appropriate for your financial goal. Uh, finally, uh, we will incorporate mutual fund into your investment plan. Let's get started. First, let's figure out what is a mutual fund. So mutual fund actually is a collection of different companies. Uh, a mutual fund company sells shares to investors and then they use the money to buy the various securities. It's very important to keep in mind that each mutual fund is a separate legal entity. So what that means is you may buy invest in a one particular mutual fund and the mutual fund family we typically have many funds, but each fund is separate. So the failure of one fund will not impact the success or failure of another mutual fund, even if they both belong to the same fund company. Mutual fund is particularly important for personal investment because many companies uh, offer mutual fund as an option in their retirement plan, such as a 401k or 403b. We have emphasized the importance of diversification when it comes to investing, particularly with stocks. And we also, um, you also see the, uh, the difficulty of diversification because a stock, um, let's say, costs $100 per share and to buy a round lot, which is 100 shares, uh, now you need $10,000 for one stock and it takes 30 to 50 stocks to be well diversified. So you have to be uh, really have a very large portfolio, a very large um, asset in order for you to do diversification on your own. Mutual fund, on the other hand, can be very effective because they oftentimes have minimum investment as low as $1,000. So for someone to start investing, mutual fund is an excellent vehicle. So next, let's take a look at different types of mutual funds. Um, the most common type of mutual funds are open-end mutual funds. Open-end mutual funds um, is a structure such that investors can uh, buy and sell shares from the company directly. Uh, so the value of open-end mutual funds are computed once a day and all tradings happen at the end of the day. So the net asset value, this is how much the fund is worth. The net asset value is the market value of the fund's portfolio. So all the assets, all the stocks, bonds that is owned by the mutual fund minus any liability and then divided by the shares outstanding is um, considered the net asset value. So whether or not you're buying a, a share of open-end fund or you're selling a share of open-end fund, all the transactions are executed at the end of the day. So if you need your money in the middle of the day, you, that is not available for an open-end fund. But again, mutual fund is for long-term investing. In contrast, there are closed-end funds. Closed-end funds, once the uh, initial e offering is over, then no new shares will be issued or redeemed. So if, a, if you own closed-end funds, the only way that you can get your money back is to sell the shares in the stock exchange. The, and the important thing about closed-end fund is that the price of the fund may not equal to the net asset value because the net asset value is computed uh, the same way that um, is computed by from open-end open mutual fund. However, uh, closed-end funds, there's no guarantee when you sell it in the open market that you'll get the same, um, you'll get the net asset value. What you'll get is the market price. It, the last type of mutual fund that is very popular is exchange traded fund. This is not quite a closed-end fund, but it's more similar to it. Uh, exchange traded funds typically follows an index and we'll explain what that means. Um, 
and investors will buy and sell shares on open exchanges to get their money back. Uh, exchange traded funds, unlike closed end funds, um, they their value much more closely follow their uh, net asset value. So that's the big difference between a closed end fund and an exchange traded fund. Uh, in, the most popular types of mutual fund are open end mutual fund and exchange traded funds. So one of the advantage of exchange traded fund is that you can uh, execute it similar to buying and selling stocks. So in other words, you can buy and sell these funds throughout the entire day. Uh, in contrast, the open end mutual funds, you can all the transactions occur at the end of the day. Now that you understand the types of mutual funds, let's take a look at different types of expenses. As we talked about earlier, uh, expenses cut into our return. So it's important to identify what those are. We'll actually look at a, a more concrete example in a minute. The first type of expenses, these are one type expense or one time expense. Uh, they are called, one of the expenses is called a load. A load mutual fund is the commission that you pay when you purchase the fund. So let's take a look at how does a load affect your investment. Let's say you have $1,000 and you purchase a 5%, a fund that has a 5% load. So that means $50 goes to pay the brokerage firm's commission. Only $950 gets invested. And some funds have back end load and those uh, back load means that you pay the commission when you sell the fund. Those are much less common. In addition to low, which is a commission, which is a commission paid to the brokers, a purchase fee, redemption fee, or exchange fee, these are expenses charged by the fund company. They are also deducted from your investment, but the main difference is that they are paid to the fund company, not the brokers. A low goes to a brokerage firm. So those are one-time expenses. The, another important expense is the recurring expenses. So this is, uh, these expenses will be deducted as long as you own the fund. One very common one is called a 12B1 fee. <laughs> the, the, uh, again, this is a funny name. 12B1 actually here refers to the legislation that allowed them to charge this fee. And this is technically be used only for marketing purposes. Uh, management fee is one that is paid to the investment firm. So some funds have 12B1 fees and some funds don't, but all funds will have management fee, but they do very quickly. Some are very low and some can be quite high. Expense ratio is uh, a statistics that is provided by the mutual fund and it shows the as a percentage of the value that is used to fund the fund's expenses. Uh, expense ratio is important because it reduces the return that you get on your investment. So let's take a look at the example of how expense ratio affect your bottom line. So let's say you have a low expense fund. So the expense ratio is only half a percent. So you, you invest $10,000 and your fund generates 10% in return per year. After 20 years, the money in the low expense fund will have grown to $61,000. In a high expense fund, the expense ratio is one and a half percent. And the, uh, it earned the same return, same 10%, but then it will only increase to $51,000. So when you look at the expense ratio, you may think, well, what is the difference between half a percent and one and a half percent? That does not sound like a whole lot. But if you take into account, when you look at this, the difference is $10,000 on a $10,000 investment. So that is actually quite significant. Now you understand the return and expenses on mutual fund. Let's take a look at different types of mutual fund and how can, and their risk and return characteristics. So active mutual funds are mutual funds where managers uh, pursue an active investment strategy. So what that means is that they will do fundamental analysis or technical analysis to try to outperform the average return um, in their particular fund category. 
Active stock funds uh, can be classified into growth funds. Growth funds tend to focus on stock that have above average revenue and above average reven uh, earnings growth. So again, these are fund, uh, companies that are growing at an above average rate. Equity equal uh, income funds will focus on funds that has high dividend growth. So this is similar to stocks. So an active stock funds that is a growth fund will focus on growth company and an in equity income fund will focus on stocks that have high uh, dividend yields. Capital appreciation fund focus on stocks that has low dividend payout ratio and high capital appreciation. But this does not necessarily mean these are high growth companies. So this could be companies that the managers believe to have been undervalued and therefore the stock price will increase. Uh, sector fund are funds that focus on particular sectors such as healthcare sector, technology sector, manufacturing sector, transportation. So it's, um, it's not diversified across industry, but it's diversified within one industry. Active bond funds include high yield bond fund. We already talked about uh, those bonds. Uh, high yield bond funds will invest in high yield, highly speculative uh, bonds. So this, uh, so they are trying to reduce risk through diversification, but it's still high risk. Um, intermediate corporate bond funds will focus on bonds that invest in investment grade um, and have an intermediate term. Long-term corporate bond fund, as the name suggests, focus on bonds uh, funds that have uh, bonds that have longer maturity. The important uh, part to remember about active fund is that the goal of an actively managed fund is to outperform the average. In contrast, uh, passive funds. Passive funds do not seek to outperform an index, but instead they seek to mirror the specific index. Uh, the most important characteristic of a passive fund is that the expense ratio tend to be much lower. So stock index fund, these are some of the most popular indexes. Uh, so the S&P 500 index, um, it invests in the 500 largest stocks. Uh, NASDAQ um, composite index, invest in stocks that are traded on the NASDAQ exchange. These tend to be technology focused stocks. Russia 2000 focuses on the 2000 smallest company. And the Future 5000 total market is the most diversified. So S&P 500, a large cap company. Uh, NASDAQ is technology. Russell 2000 is small company, and then Russell 5000 total market is the most diversified index. In addition to board-based index, um, they can you also have uh, more focused index funds. These more focused index funds can be focused on a specific sector, or they have be focused based on just market cap. So instead of the S&P 500 or Russell 2000, they can have large cap, medium cap, small cap, micro cap. So again, this is just uh, but rather than trying to outperform the benchmark average, they try to mirror the index. There are also bond index funds. Um, this popular bond index funds includes uh, the Bloomberg Aggregate Bond Index um, and some of this investment grade bond index. Uh, with bond index funds, they have similar characteristics characteristics of stock index fund. Um, there are also US government bond index funds and they focus on and they can, you can buy long term, intermediate term or short term. Uh, as we said earlier, if you only have very little money, so a thousand or two thousand dollars to start, an index funds may be a good way to go. Uh, however, if you have slightly more money and you're ready to invest in government bond on your own for U.S. Treasuries, uh, there's no reason to pay expense ratio because U.S. Treasuries are pretty easy to buy and this doesn't require any skills. All you need to choose is the duration. You know whether it's a T bill for short term, T note for intermediate term, and T bond for long term and there's no diversification necessary for U.S. Treasuries. 
Municipal bonds, on the other hand, does carry risk. So there is a case for having a diversified municipal bond portfolio. To recap, uh, passive mutual funds uh, tend to have much lower expense ratio, and that's its main selling point. There are other types of mutual fund as well besides active, active and passive. Uh, there are some mutual funds that are called balance fund. So this fund, um, they balance between capital appreciation and income, and they tend to invest in both stocks and bonds. Um, and there are also funds called asset allocation fund. And it's tricky because in here, the asset allocation fund does not actually do asset allocation. In fact, uh, their goal is to time the market. So asset allocation fund can turn out to be quite risky. So they try to change the asset allocation in anticipation of changes in market conditions. So if they think the stock market is going to outperform the bond market, they will allocate more money into stocks. If they think that the stock market is going to underperform, then they will allocate more money to bonds. So it's a market timing fund that is a more uh, accurate description of the objective. Target date fund is a fund that has a specific target date, and then they will change the portfolio to be less risky as it approaches the target date. So target date funds are very popular with um, uh, retirement planning and 401k. So this is, um, they are actually quite useful if you do not want to do your own asset allocation and you do not want to rebound, do your own rebalance. So this is the, um, this is basically uh, a do it all type of fund. So it requires the least amount of work from the investor. You basically pick a target fund, target day fund that match your expected retirement date and the fund will do all the S allocation for you. Uh, the last um, type of fund is a money market fund. This is very low risk. Uh, they're a great option for you to put your emergency fund or things that you think you will need in less than a year. So in lieu of T-bills and money market fund, in fact, most money market fund purchase uh, invest in T-bills. So instead of buying your own T-bill, you can put your money into a money market fund. And the expense ratios are usually very, very, very low. Finally, uh, there are last few categories of funds that may be useful. Uh, international funds, as the name suggests, invest in foreign securities. Uh, so you can gain even more diversification uh, by investing in foreign securities besides U.S. securities. Uh, this may particularly be useful if you expect to spend a fair amount of time overseas or you may have family overseas and you want to get exposure to that particular country's um, risk. Uh, however, if you are a primary U.S. investor, then there is additional risk associated with international investing. However, with the additional risk, uh, you also carry additional return and you, and you improve on your diversification. Regional funds, instead of just foreign, they focus on specific regions such as Asia or um, South America. So you can pick regions of the world. A global fund will invest in stocks both in the U.S. as well as uh, in foreign countries. For some investors, they care more than just risk and return. Um, so if you want to make sure that your money does not go into specific type of companies, you can choose a socially responsible fund. Uh, this one's their focus is on making a positive, sustainable social impact. So, but each one is different. So some of these funds will exclude um, fossil fuel, for example, that's a common screening option. Uh, other funds may exclude weapons. Uh, so depending on your personal value, we talk about personal value as an important part of your uh, financial planning. Uh, this may be a fund that you would like to invest your money in. Most of them are quite diversified. So uh, they are not as diversified as the total market. However, they are still relatively well diversified. The last type of fund is called fund of funds. Uh, they invest shares in other mutual funds. 
So you end up paying expenses for more than once. So there's really very little case for buying a fund of funds. Uh, but um, there's definitely, um, in summary, uh, passive investing, index investing, it t tend to have the lowest expense ratio. Uh, and uh, socially responsible fund, a lot of them also follow a socially responsible index. So that is an option as well. We'll pause the video here. I'll see you again soon when we come back. Uh, we're going to look at different types of risk associated with investing in mutual funds. See you soon.